Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Irv Hughes, president of American Credit Assurance, and I am really excited to share with you some information on how to go about getting a business loan. Over the years, my team and I have helped over 4,000 small businesses get access to over $100 million in loans and access to capital. And today we're going to run through some bullet points to help you understand what exactly it is you need to do to stack the deck in your favor. So to begin, what applicants should know? And the first thing I want you to know, guys, is that business lending is different than consumer lending. And frankly, many people understand uh, consumer lending simply because they've had more experience, previous borrowing experiences with making purchases of homes, cars, and getting approvals for credit cards and things like that. So with business lending, to get a business loan, here's one of the things that you want to know. First of all, instead of just one approval, this requires two separate approvals. First of all, you as the applicant, you have to qualify. And then secondly, the business itself must qualify by meeting credibility guidelines, which I'm going to just run through a checklist for you to make sure you understand what you need to do to make sure your business is in fact credible. So let's talk about applicant qualifications. So first of all, you as the owner, your industry experience and specialized knowledge, that's what lenders are going to look for when you're looking for a small business loan. Second, they're going to look at your personal credit history. Third, they're going to look at your personal income, your assets, and your net worth. It's vitally important that you understand what those numbers look like. And then business funding amount requested. Now, one of the things I want to point out is if you're looking for higher amounts of a business loan, then you're going to actually need more and more qualifications. And then what type of financing you're requesting. In other words, are you looking for a large loan? Are you looking for an SBA loan? Are you looking for a private loan? What type of financing are you requesting? Vitally important. So now let's jump into how to make sure your business is credible. And so what I'm going to share with you is sort of the top 10 uh, things that lenders look for when they are looking to approve or qualify a business for a business loan. Now, one of the things I want you to understand is that just because of the sheer volumes of loan applications that lenders get today, a lot of the business loan applications are pre-qualified or evaluated electronically with artificial intelligence or AI. And so what I'm sharing with you is the top 10 things that the AI is going to look for. And so we're just going to quickly run through this checklist so that you can use this as a benchmark for whether or not you can make your business credible. So number one is your business formation documents must match. And when we say match, we want to make sure that your business address, the same address that's on your business documents is the same address and phone number that's on your bank accounts. That's the same number and address that's on your office uh, lease documents. All of those documents must match. Secondly, if you're in a business that requires licensing, make sure your business licenses are in fact up to date and in force. Next, you want to make sure that you have a federal tax ID number or what we call an EIN number for the business. Next is your physical business address. Now, this is important because many people today are operating their businesses from their home, and it's perfectly fine to have a home office. But on your business documents, and especially your loan documents, make sure you have a commercial address because that's going to add credibility to your business in the pre-qualification process. Next, you want to make sure you have a separate business phone number. Today, business phone numbers that are business owners that use cell phones, for example, as their business phone won't score as high in the AI as a separate business phone. Now, there's a reason for that is because the AI is also going to need to look for your business phone number in the national 411 directory. So you want to make sure that you have a separate phone number, separate from a phone number that is also listed tied to your business name in the national 411 directory. Vitally important. Next, you want to have a business fax number. 
Now, oftentimes, business owners tell me, well, wait a minute, Irv, we really don't use fax numbers anymore. Well, let me just tell you, with regard to the credibility test, you want to make sure that if you're going to get a voice over IP phone number, uh, which I highly recommend uh, for your business line, also get a matching fax number to go with it. And it's pretty easy to go about doing that. Next is your business website. Yes, you need a business website that has your company name, your logo, your company's history, what it is you sell, what your products and services are, and more importantly, how to reach you if they've got questions. And then next is your business email address and domain. Make sure that you're using a professional email address with your company domain on it that matches your website. The AI is absolutely going to look at that. And I'm going to just tell you now, I'm not saying to cancel your Gmail or your Yahoo mails. I'm simply saying on your business documents for your business loan, make sure you're using a professional email address and domain. And then lastly, make sure that you clean up any public records that may be uh, on your business, such as tax liens or judgments or pending lawsuits and things like that. That's going to be important because the AI is going to take a look at that. So now having said that, let's talk about where to go about finding, uh, where to go about turning in your applications uh, for funding for a business loan. So if you're looking for a small business loan, obviously one of the first places you can take a look at is your local bank. And so you want to take a look at your local bank. You're going to look at credit unions. One that's a lesser known lending source is your Community Development Financial Institution or a CDFI. Now, I want to pause right there and just let you guys know that a CDFI, if you're a startup, you might want to take a look at a CDFI first because they partner with banks to be able to do loans that are less stringent to qualify for than, say, with a bank. All right. Next is asset based lenders, cash flow lenders. Also, you want to look at buy now, pay later lenders. Now, I know that might sound like a foreign uh a source of funding for you, but these lenders actually provide you with loans or advance you money based on the sales you make to your customers. And they let your customers pay over time, but you get your cash up front for the sale. Also, equipment finance lenders, for those of you who sell equipment, also dealer financing lenders might be a good option for you. And let's not leave out crowdfunding platforms. Guys, if you're a startup and you're looking uh, to get a loan to start your business, crowdfunding platforms might be a great opportunity for you to be able to raise uh, loan funds. And then lastly, don't forget loan guarantors. Loan guarantors are a great help to be able to uh, help a, a brand new business or even an existing business where perhaps you've gone through some things and now you need to get a loan either to get going to start up or expand your business. So don't forget about friends and family who might you might invite to be uh, a guarantor on a loan application uh, for you. Now, let's talk about what documents you will need. Guys, you're going to need some documents. And so one of the next next things you're going to do is you're going to assemble your loan package. And so I'm going to run through a checklist of some documents that you want to go ahead and start now and pull together. So next, you want to have a business plan or at the very least, an executive summary for those of you who are startups. Write a few paragraphs about what your business is and what it's going to do. Your business formation documents that show ownership and control, that you have ownership and control of the business. Next, your business operating or personal history. Personal history for startups. If you've been in business, then you'll need an operating history. And this is just a few paragraphs about some of the things that you've done uh, successfully. You're going to need your company's financial statements. And this is going to be your balance sheet, your profit loss, your accounts receivable, accounts payable. Uh, and yes, guys, you're going to need both your business and personal tax returns. So you go ahead and pull uh, those together. If you are a startup, you say you may not have these documents. And I'm saying even if you have to project those uh, financial statements, go ahead and do a set of projections and get some projection or pro forma financial statements. The next thing is your business financial performance ratio. In this particular ratio, I want you to pay attention to something called a debt service coverage ratio. You won't have time to get into what that is right now, but I would encourage you to go out and just search on the internet for DSCR, debt service coverage ratio. You need to know what yours is. And then the business use of funds. Write a checklist of what the business is going to use the funds for 
because it's going to be really, really important that the lender is going to pay attention to how the funds are going to be used. And then lastly, before you begin, I want to set a few expectations for those of you who are applicants. The expectation is fees. Most lenders will not charge any upfront fees. However, business lenders will typically charge some type of fee at closing. So just be prepared to pay some amount of fees. Okay, everyone. So now that we have talked about how to get a business loan, now we're going to talk about how to build and manage business credit. When you're in a small business, it's vitally important that the moment you start your business or even if you've been in business 20 years, you need to build business credit business credit that is separate and apart from your personal credit. Now, over the many years, my team and I have literally helped thousands of small businesses build business credit and manage business credit. And today we're going to share with you some of the information that you as a business owner are going to need to know about how to build business credit. So the first thing I want you to know is that business credit is different than consumer credit. Unlike consumer credit, business credit is also known as net 30 credit that's obtained from suppliers and can be built by using your company's EIN number and not your personal SSN. So the first thing I want you to understand is different. the difference between, say, getting a business loan and building business credit is where you go about getting the credit. When we talk about business credit, we're talking about getting credit from suppliers or people that you do trade with as opposed to a lender, okay? So these are suppliers that you're going to start building uh, business credit with. Now, the primary benefit, of course, in building and managing business credit is to get access to revolving credit to use for working capital without the use of personal credit or even personal guarantees. And doing so helps you protect your personal credit and assets. So for those of you who have great personal credit, guess what? Business credit is going to help you protect that. And if you have personal assets, it's going to help you protect that as well. Now, there's some things that you're going to have to make sure that you cover. We're going to run through a list of maybe the top 10 steps to building business credibility because your business does have to be found to be credible so that it can stand on its own with regard to building business credit. So we're going to just run through this checklist and then you can go back and sort of match up your business with whether or not you have these things in order. So obviously your business formation documents have to match. You must have business licenses if that's required in your field, your tax ID number, your physical business address. You're going to need a separate business phone number separate and apart from your cell phone. Uh, your national 411 directory, that phone number, that business phone number I just mentioned needs to be registered in the national 411 directory. Yes, you're going to need to have a business fax number. You're also going to need to have a website because guess what? They're going to take a look at that. Um, the business email and address, the domain, all of that has to match your website, your domain for your email and the domain uh, where your uh, business is parked on the internet. Also, make sure you clear up any personal uh, records as far as uh, tax liens and judgments, and also the same thing for the business. Anything that's going to be tied to the business. Remember, the goal here in biz building business credit is to set up the business so that from a credit standpoint, it can stand on its own separate and apart from you. Now, next, you want to get started building your business credit reports. There are four major credit reporting agencies for business, and one of them is Dun & Bradstreet. So the first thing you want to do is get a Dun's number from Dun & Bradstreet. Next, you want to get an Experian business credit report. Go to Experian. Each of these, you can go to their website and start that process. Also, you want to get Equifax Small Business Credit Report. And then lastly, a credit report from TradeCreditReport.com. These are the top four business credit reporting agencies. Now, the next thing, once you set up your business where you've now put in applications so you can start your profiles, the next thing you want to do is you want to start applying for net 30 credit terms with suppliers. So you want to apply for terms with these suppliers that will report your on-time payments to the business credit reporting agencies. 
Next, you want to make purchases using the credit accounts instead of prepaying for cash on cash or using a credit card. Now, this is important in building business credit is that you make small purchases and you do that consistently so that you create what's called pay cycles. These pay cycles get reported and that's how it builds your company's credit. And the last thing I want to point out right here is make sure, guys, that you do not pay. This is a mistake many owners make when they're building business credit. Make sure that when you're buying on net 30 credit terms that you do not pay your your suppliers invoices too quickly. So make sure you pay your invoices 15 to 25 days from the date of the invoice. If you pay before 15 days, it probably won't track as a trade credit transaction, meaning that it's just going to register as a cash transaction and it won't report to your credit report. OK, and then you want to re repeat this process as often as needed when you're building uh, business credit. So having said that, with managing your vendor accounts, remember that you're trying to get to a Paydex score of 80 or above. To put that in perspective, an 80 Paydex score on a business uh, credit report on a Dun & Bradstreet report is about the equivalent of about a 740 personal FICO score. That's just to give you a benchmark to sort of measure with. Generally, after about 12 on-time uh, payment cycles, you may be able to request longer payment terms for, from your suppliers and make sure you monitor your business credit reports. Now, why that's important, guys, is because the bigger your trade credit or your business credit report gets, it will allow you now to move on and start applying not just for vendor credit, but now also for business credit cards. You want to apply for business credit cards. And so the benefit here, guys, is bank issued business credit cards with cashback benefits or longer payment terms such as net 60 or net 90. And let's not forget that you can also get increased credit limits after you have had a few payment cycles on these bank issued uh, business credit cards. Next, business credit cards that feed data into the business credit reports, not your personal credit reports. It's vitally important to understand when you get bank issued business credit cards that you understand where those payments are going to be reported to one of the business credit reporting agencies that we discussed earlier. And then lastly, the benefit is it helps you maintain liquidity for higher bank ratings. Now, we don't have time to get into what a bank rating is, but I do want to share with you one thing. And that's one major advantage to building business credit is to maintain at least something called a low five rating. That is an average daily balance of $10,000 or more over a 90 day period. When you're building business credit, the key here is to use credit to defer payments to maintain higher bank balances or increase your company's liquidity. A business credit paydex score, you should have a goal of 85, certainly above 80, but your goal should be 85 because that is a stellar business credit score. The other benefit of obviously is it stabilizes those cash balances uh, by deferring payments for operating expenses. Now, a lot of people ask the question, well, what can I use business credit for? You can use business credit to buy inventory for your business. You can buy equipment. Oftentimes people don't know that equipment, if you're trying to buy equipment like uh, vehicles, uh, like uh, capital equipment and things like that, you can actually finance equipment. Ef equipment finance companies won't even check personal credit if you have a business credit score. So for inventory, equipment, materials, and supplies for your business, you absolutely want to have the benefit of building business credit. Well, guys, that's all uh, we have for now. Thank you so much for your time and attention.